above all else, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is boring. It's, it's also really stupid, but mainly boring. And as this series made a whole trilogy trying to regain its reputation as a thoughtful, character-driven, emotional series, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes delivers us a shockingly dumb plot with characters that are impossible to care about through a story that only evokes apathy. Now to give you guys the rundown of what's going on here, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is vaguely set several generations after war for the planet of the apes. The exact dating of when this takes place is purposefully left vague uh, by the writers because they wanted to leave it up to the audience's interpretation, which I find just a, a tad bit annoying when time was so pivotal in all the other movies, but okay, whatever. So several generations after the reign of Caesar, we are introduced to our main chimp, Noah. And you know when it's uh, when you're starting a movie, it's a great idea to make us, the audience, care about the protagonist and the setting they're in right away, right from the start. So what does Kingdom do? Does it start off with a fascinating monologue for our main hero to give us a strong look into their characterization or rev us up into the inciting incident? No, we're introduced to the blandest protagonist in human, well, or monkey, history. The guy is stale. Oh, well, if it doesn't get that right, does uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes at least start with an action scene that, you know, kind of foreshadows the rest of the movie? Like starting off by showing how apes are preyed upon and subjugated by humans? Or how maybe apes have now evolved into predators and showing that apes together are strong. Or how humanity going to war only leads to its demise. Does Kingdom start with a neat action scene like that? No, it's just a monkey swinging around trying to snatch a bird egg. And we have to wait 30 minutes for anything to happen. And in the meantime, while we wait, we can see these apes go about their day with their bird eggs. But come on, those bird eggs must be uber important to the rest of the plot, right? No, they have no bearing on the plot whatsoever. Everything remotely related to the birds should have just been cut to save us the unbearably long, undeserved 2 hour 25 minute runtime. And as we wait and wait and wait for something to happen, eventually some mean monkeys come, raid the town, kidnap the villagers, and Noah's dad gets murdered! And at this moment did I start bawling my eyes out in agony for this chimp? Was I hit with a Mr. Stark, I'm not feeling so good. Not quite. Which is a bit odd because having someone close to a character die is the easiest way to evoke emotion. And there are even movie scenes where we spend very little, practically no time at all with a character, and when they lose something, it can still be gut wrenching. Like, an example I like to use is in First Blood, John Rambo, he's on screen for about 90 seconds until he hears the shocking news about his friend. And because of the presence of relatable, sincere acting, in less than two minutes, we feel for Rambo. But when there is a nothing connecting you to the character who is grieving, even on a surface level, it gets harder and harder to get us to care. Because Kingdom does a really poor job at forcing the audience to be invested in any of its characters. Because all of the apes, well, outside of Mr. Orangutan, man, he was actually pretty cool. But outside of that Orangutan, all of the apes are void of any personality. Which is all too apparent when you compare these stale apes 
with the pimped out bad ape who's got that mad trick. Oh no! Oh no! And not only does Kingdom's chimps have no personality or swagger, they also have no emotional depth and none of them go on any sort of character arc. Like Noah's arc could be summarized by uh, his dad's pet bird doesn't like him and by the end his dad's pet bird does kind of like him. But before Noah's dad's pet bird kind of likes him, Noah needs to go on a journey to save the members of his village who have been enslaved because he's a hero. And along the way, he meets our nice human character named May, whose uh, the dynamic journey is that she starts off by wanting to save humanity. And every step of the way has no doubts at all about that and ends up continuing to fight to save humanity. And because May is also a very, very special little girl, this girl's able to physically beat two full-sized apes in a fight. Uh, because uh, the movie says so, and you know what? I believe them. And then Noah and May meet our main evil guy named Proximus who is, to be fair, well acted, but is neither intimidating nor interesting. Oh. He was not as ruthless and determined as Woody Harrelson was in War for the Planet of the Apes, who would even go to the extent to kill his own son to get what he wants. And did Proximus do anything unnerving like that? Like, did Proximus put the apes in an overwhelming suppressive slave camp? Like if any of the apes acted up or was not strong enough to work, did they get shot in the face or punched in the face by a gorilla? No, nope. because in Proximus's camp, you seem to have the most relaxed prison you can imagine with the ability to leave the camp anytime, anytime at all, just so long as you're willing to climb something. Oh, I, I might have forgot to mention that all the prisoners are chimpanzees. And because these prisoners are allowed to escape anytime they want to, our beautiful heroes decide to escape. And then they break into an impenetrable fallout shelter, where the United States government put all of its special people and equipment. And as our heroes get into this advanced military bunker, our main human hero, May, desperately does not want Proximus to get the goods inside because the human race depends on it. So what does she do? What is her main course of action? To open the front door that is right in front of Proximus's home. You know, May, you you didn't have to do that. You could have just planned on getting out the way you came. You know, like all of the chimpanzees end up doing anyways. And, you know, if you just kept the vault shut and set off your nice little explosives, you could destroy Proximus's camp. And you would have no idea you were in there in the bunker to begin with. But, anywho... Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is my favorite movie because it's almost as good as Madam Web. Thanks for watching Duck Finder on YouTube. For more premium content, subscribe.